before anyone says anything about how my voice sounds or the rings under my eyes, I just had a bit of a rough night and I have a sore throat. It's, it's all good. you Hillmaniacs, it's Hillmanator. And we're coming towards the end of first year, as you are probably well away. In fact, most of you have probably already finished both school and university, or whatever you're doing at this time of year. I still have an exam. <sighs> but despite that, I want to try and sum up my first year. I thought today I could do a meaningful video like the one I did about first term where I talk about all the stuff that I've learned and the different things I've discovered about myself over the course of this year. Then I thought it'd be funnier if I just told you a story about my life. Now as most of you know, I'm an incredibly awkward person, both in terms of me just being awkward in personality and making people feel uncomfortable, or well, hey, and also awkward things just happen to me. A lot. I wouldn't be a YouTuber if they didn't, apparently, so uh, that seems to be accurate as to why. Now, a couple of awkward things have happened to me at uni. I've had professors see me swimming in the local swimming pool. I've been recognised by people when I've had horrible sunburn where my face was peeling. That one was fun. But my personal favourite was the time when um, I saw a bit more of a professor than I wanted to. Now before we get started, I want to establish it's not anyone in the department's fault that this happened. This is completely on me and me just being a flaming awkward. There's a building in Lancaster called County South and that is the place where the PPR department is. So we've got all of the professor's offices in there, we've got all of the administration for it and I go there quite often. I have to hand in my essays there, go to my academic talks there, organise my study abroad there partly and basically everything that I do that isn't a lecture or a seminar or further research is done in there. As such you can probably imagine I spend quite a bit of time in there. There were three things I needed to do in this building that day. I needed to hand in an essay by filling in a cover sheet and then slipping it into a box in the building. i would already completed it online but I needed to finish handing it in in person because we do both in my department for some reason. Then I needed to organise my study abroad a bit, I needed to talk with a leader in the department and also my part one advisor uh, who was just brilliant. And finally I needed to talk with my academic advisor because we had scheduled a meeting that day just to make sure that everything was on track for that particular term and that I was doing alright. The first thing I did, I printed off the essay, picked it up and went over to the building and I filled in the cover sheet, slipped it in the box, job done. I had two people that I needed to talk to before I went to see my academic advisor. The first was the head of the department and he's a really lovely chap from my conversation with him. And then second off was my part one advisor person. She basically was... I'm not sure how much control she has in terms of the department and stuff, but she was the one who I interacted with the most regularly. She was my first port of call whenever it came to anything about this year. She was the one who I had picked up all of my essays from, and she is a lovely human being. Uh, <laughs> she's helped me out quite a bit this year because I've mucked up several times in terms of paperwork, but she has been fairly nice with me, so it's all worked out well. So I had my chat with them, and both of them were amazing. Unfortunately, I couldn't solve all of my issues with study abroad at that time. I still had a number that I had to complete later. For example, my visa, which I've now officially got. I have my visa now. Uh, Immigration New Zealand have allowed me into their country. Whether I actually managed to get the grades to stay in their country is still up for question. But uh, officially speaking, I'm allowed to go to New Zealand. But I only got my visa sorted recently. This was quite a while back in the process, so it, a lot of stuff needed to happen ahead of time, but I was still trying to sort everything out. So I went over to my academic advisor's office, and he was still in his previous meeting, and obviously you don't want to disturb an academic. So I figured, okay, I kind of need the loo. Let's go. I mean, by the time I get back, he'll probably be done, and it'll all be great. It'll be fine. 
So I decided to go down the corridor and I found a new set of toilets that, I say new, they weren't new, but they were new for me because I had never seen them before. Uh, they were just around the corner, but the other corner than the one I usually go down. So I went in there. There were two cubicles in this toilet and I needed to use one of them. So I figured the one with the closed door probably has someone in. Let's not go for that one and go for the one with the door that's wide open. No one will possibly be in there. And that's when I saw it. I walked up, turned the corner, and wow, hello professor. Obviously I didn't say that. I very quickly realised what I was looking at. Unfortunately, I did get a full look. And, um, it's a, uh, it, I, there's no coming back from that. I am traumatised forever. Fortunately, he did not see me. So, quickly as I could, because obviously I can't risk him knowing that I've seen anything, uh, I dive around the corner into the closed cubicle because apparently it was unlocked and empty. So I'm now sat in this cubicle. And... <laughs> I know that he's right next to me. I essentially waited there for 10 minutes after he left the room because I was just like, nope, I don't want any chance of running into him on the corridors. His office was along the corridor that I had to go back down to meet with my academic advisor. <laughs> so I waited 10 minutes into my meeting with my academic advisor. I kept my academic advisor waiting for ages because... I was too awkward to walk down a corridor which the guy wouldn't have been in because he would have been in his office. Why does this so accurately sum me up? I have so many awkward stories from uni and awkward stories from home as well, but that's what that's got to be one of my favourites. Uh, accidentally walking in on your professor on the loo. There's, there's no coming back from that, is there? Fortunately, as I said, the professor didn't see me, but now I've just realised I'm making a video about it. So if he knew that someone had seen him but didn't see who, now he does. Uh, hi. It was me. I, I apologise. <laughs> As I said at the beginning, this wasn't the professor's fault, it was no one in the department's fault. If it was anyone's fault, it was mine, because I would have been an idiot and assumed that somewhere it would be empty, rather than actually checking. Uh, good, good job, Josh. You walked in on a professor because you couldn't be bothered to check whether the cubicle was empty. I figure that accurately sums up more or less my time at university. I joke, of course, if that did sum up my time at university, then I would have had a very concerning time at university. I hope that none of you uh, ever do anything like that. Unfortunately, it's not the first time that something like that has happened. A very similar situation happened with me years ago. Not exactly the same, but uh, I was doing work experience at a local school when I was in year 10. I was working as a teacher's assistant in effect, so I was sitting with the kids who were struggling with the classes more and just trying to get them up to the same level as the rest of the students were. Uh, I wasn't actually in that much of an authoritative role, but I was still there and I had a lot of fun during that time. But one day I went into the staff room toilets, which obviously, where else am I going to go? I can't go into the students' toilets because I'm not a student at this school, I'm part of the staff, I'm here on work experience. Just to establish I had been told to go into the staff room toilets, it wasn't just me asserting my dominance over the fellow 15 year olds that were in the school. I went in and let me just say, staff toilets, they are so clean, like ridiculously clean. Every school that I have been to, the toilets have always been a mess. Like horrific mess, especially high schools. They're very nasty. Uh, I'm sure you guys can imagine, and some of you may remember 
uh, especially those of you who are still at school or have just completed your last year. My schools in particular had some nasty toilets. Oh. But these staff toilets, they were so clean and just lovely. There was, there was no graffiti. There was no pee on the floor. It was a very nice toilet considering it was in a school. Why am I getting so obsessed with how clean this toilet was? Moving on. So I walked in and I went to a cubicle and of course, as I said earlier, it's a very similar situation. I open the cubicle door up because it's not locked and no one's going to be in there. Except they were. And there was a maths teacher from that school. Uh, yeah, just, just sat there. He did see me, but we both, uh, locked eyes, and within those two seconds of eye contact before I managed to close the door again, we both silently agreed that we would never talk about it again. Until now. Once again, not his fault. Not anyone at that school's fault. I just have a habit of assuming that somewhere that isn't locked is going to be empty. I don't know why. It's almost as if you should lock the toilet that you're in. Those are the two awkward times in my life that I have accidentally walked in on not just another man, but one of my teacher slash authority figures in a very compromising situation. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there because I feel like I've talked a bit too much today and uh, now I've got horrible memories flashing through my brain and I can't get them to stop. Please let them stop. I hope that you've enjoyed my pain and torment over the years and I hope that you continue to enjoy it as we go forward and that soon as I finish my next exam. <sighs> okay. Thanks for watching all. I shall catch you next time.